took me ages to get up because he was just being very affectionate. And then I was being very affectionate. And then he didn't like that. But too bad. I like to give him hugs. Yes. Hello, my love. Also, I have a pretty intense cold right now. I'm going to sound a bit stuffy, especially when I read. I am so sorry. I'm just, I'm very sorry for that. Oh, I wish. This has the future. Cold. It's cold. It's cold over here. Oh, I have this. Actually, I was going to say it's a little bruise on my finger. Um, It's not. My roommate looked at it and was like, dickhead, that's a burn. It's really sore every time I touch it. Strike one or two, two. Look, Shrek 1, I, I appreciate it. It established the franchise. I think it's a very good, very strong film. It's a very strong story. It's a very good movie. Love story between Shrek and Fiona? Fuck God tier. Shrek 2, unironically one of the best movies ever made, though. Like, this is no shade to Shrek 1. I don't think many films can compare to Shrek 2, though. Shrek 2, like, I... I'm not saying this as a joke. I'm not saying this ironically. I think Shrek 2 is legitimately a masterpiece. I think it is a perfect film. I think it's fucking phenomenal. Like, I love Shrek. Like, nothing can compare to Shrek 2. You can put Shrek 2 up against most films, and I'll say Shrek 2. I just can't I forget Aussie Weather exists. We are opposite. <laughs> Book. Very much so. I will eat up and devour anything that Suzanne Collins especially, like writes, especially in that universe. Um, I think it's like I, I genuinely do just think The Hunger Games is a fucking phenomenal series of books. I think the world building in Pan Am is so interesting and fascinating. And I think the political allegories that Suzanne Collins writes, like I, I, I genuinely think she's a genius. Um, I everything that she wrote like I was very skeptical I was very skeptical about like Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes when she wrote it um not gonna lie because at the point in time I was like why are we writing a story that I imagined was trying to sympathize the fascist government leader and give him this backstory but then I read it and I was like oh I should have just trusted that Susan Collins knows what the fuck she's doing um I have very I don't even want to say I have very, like, similar worldviews to her because I don't think it is. I think it's, like, being a very basic human being with humanity. But I think Suzanne Collins writes in a very, both a very accessible and both a very intelligent way. And I, as an adult, more and more, I like books that have something to say um, about anything. So I love that about Suzanne Collins' works. And I think it's going to be so interesting to get a book that I imagine will focus pretty intensely on propaganda and government propaganda in our current climate because obviously look at the fucking state of the world yeah i just need phoenix book i if we're going to keep doing books about the games specifically and different people's like different people's games and what they experienced I mean, like, I can't, I don't want to request anything because the only way to do it right is to, like, have something to say about the world and to have direct, like, parallels between that. Um, so, th I don't know if I want to, like, demand anything, but if we're going to get any, any, any story centered around someone's games, I want it to be Joanna's. I want it to be Joanna's. When do they get? It is. You know, have a great day. That's so sweet. And it's so surreal. Anyone have any advice in the future? Um, you do not need to have really anything figured out yet. Everyone is going to expect you to and going to expect you to make decisions. You can change your mind. You can make decisions and then change your mind. And statistically, you probably will. You don't need to have anything set, like figured out. You are so young. The next couple of years, the the nature of them and what they're there for is to just experience different factors of life and try new things and figure out who you are and who you want to be as you enter adulthood. Um, people are going to act like you need to have the next 20 years of your life like figured out and planned out ahead of you. You don't. You don't. They're lying to you. The system is lying to you. Hello, Ivy. She's got the zoomies. I want to proofread a book written by one of your fans. I feel like I'm probably like not like actually like qualified to like proofread and give opinions, but I would love to read just like anything people have written. So you put against Tangled. I mean, Tangled's gonna win, but again, 
like Can't mention, when do I not mention the cats though? Let's be real, when do I not mention the cats in this household? I'm good, then do live sitting on Labor Day. When the fuck is Labor Day? I should know this. Lucy sells it up. Oh yeah, I hate that, I'm so sorry. That's the most disorienting thing. Like it's nice, it's always like really good sleep that you get, thank you for sending TikToks. Thank you so much. But it's so disorienting when you like wake up and you're like, this is, much later in the day than I thought it was going to be. What is time? Where am I? <laughs> like, well, since we got a Willow update. Willow as well. I'm going to see her next week, which I'm excited about. Um, no, she's good. She has supervised outdoor time all the time now. Um, and she loves it. But she rolls around on the ground a lot. And then you have to try and get her to let you, like, wash grass off of her. And she gets upset about that. But that's, that's what comes with the supervised outdoor time. Um. What does Percy do? Percy thinks. Honestly, he's pretty entertaining to just, like, watch. To just, like, let him be free. And, like, observe him. That's the thing I love about cats, is I feel like cats, you can really just, like, watch them go about their day. I think it's Percy's advice outdoor time. So I've like kind of tried. I've bought Percy a harness and tried. Um, he really freaks out with like the harness on, but Percy is someone who, whenever he goes outside, the few times that he has in his life, he freaks out and his instinct when he freaks out is to just run. No discernible direction, just run and to climb and to get away. So, um... That's obviously not very safe for him to do. Um, so the idea was that I could give it to him via, via having him on like a lead, but he hates that as well. So at this point in time, no, because he can't handle it. <laughs> because um, I don't think it would be smart or safe for him to let him, like Ivy and Willow, like you just let them outside and they don't really, they just look around, have a little wander, Lay on the ground. Percy freaks out and like bolts. Um, and will try to start climbing trees and stuff to get away to get somewhere familiar. But he doesn't have like the foresight of recognizing going back inside. Um, so it's not like safe for him or for me uh, to just let him be free. And he just will not accept being on a harness. So that's so much as a mess backpack. I want to do that, but Percy won't let me. Cat was throwing away eyes, eyes. I kind of love that Ash got on the coffee. She needs it today. We have to be nice to Ash about her coffee today. Taylor actually did write the bulletin about Percy. That's a fun fact for you all. Um, 